I am an Assyrian, a descendant of the Assyrian Babylonian empires of Mesopotamia thousands of years ago. I am immensely proud of my heritage. So much of the world is focused on the today and now that the past is often ignored and forgotten. So today, I will talk to you about my Assyrian heritage, how and why I came to identify with it, and the importance of maintaining the continuity of the Assyrian nation. Shlama bedrayen al kule bne umten mukhabe kule yashkan daha khurza shmi ila karonin bitain amokhun kha khurza khata min Assyrian Global Network bayan mayan bi iqaro khun khada nabrat hajil atureta activist قد اتفالخ سبيتش او تيد توك و قبل تلاقت عبيلا خدانا انترفيو منان شمو الى سبرينا بد منصور لخت لان سبرينا منان طلبا منو قد جانو مديالا قاتو خون هلو سبرينا how are you hello i'm good how are you thank you thank you for taking the time uh, to provide us this interview on the Assyrian Global Network uh, tell us a, a little about yourself so I'm Sabrina. I'm 17. Um, I have a 14-year-old brother. He's, his name is Ayrton. Uh, my mom is French. Uh, my family is quite multicultural. So my mom is French. Uh, my dad is Assyrian, Iranian, American. And he grew up in New York for most of his life. Um, I was born in Paris. I went to bilingual school. I moved to London when I was uh, six. And I've been at wow. British school ever since. Um, my first languages were both French and English. Uh, since I went to bilingual school. My mom's side live in Paris. Uh, my dad's side live in New York, uh, New Jersey, California, Europe, kind of all over. Uh, all over, yeah. World, yeah. Um, I was a competitive national swimmer when I was uh, 12, 13. And then I turned to focus on netball, which is a sport we play in the UK. Um, to put it simply, it's just, it's kind of like a mix of basketball and handball. Okay. Um, so now I'm studying A-levels at a British school. Uh, where my core subjects are psychology, geography, and Spanish. Uh, I do a lot of research at school as well. I'm a senior in high school, uh, and I'm in my last year of school applying for uh, universities in the U.S. And yeah, so um, the kind of the research that I do, I did a lot of research on sports psychology and coaching. I'm a big, big sports fanatic. And of course, part of um, my research last year was focusing on my TEDx talk about um, my Assyrian heritage and identity. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, what else would you like to study in the future, uh, both personally and professionally? So I'm currently a little bit undecided on kind of what I'd like to major in uh, at university, but I'd potentially like to major in anthropology and minor in something like Spanish to make sure I'm kind of keeping up with my Spanish because uh, I love the language. And I have a profound interest in geological sciences, which is quite rare. So perhaps I'd like to do some research on that as well. Um, and also I love sports, like I mentioned earlier. So I'd like to continue pursuing that interest through creating you know, intramural sports um, or coaching in college and things like that. And of course, um, I'd love to do some more research on uh, Assyria and being continuing to be an activist in following the footsteps of my grandparents, which I'm sure we'll talk about in this interview. Wonderful. Uh, tell us more about your family. Are they so, also involved in um, helping the Assyrian community? Yeah, so um, like I said before, I mean, I have my two parents and my younger brother. Uh, my aunt Eunice uh, is Wilson, my, go uh, my grandfather's um, daughter. She's definitely been uh, the most involved in helping me to kind of build my connection to my roots. Uh, she's very active in the Assyrian community. She sent, she's the one that kind of sent my TEDx talk to uh, everyone she knows and to the whole Assyrian community, which is kind of how I got here, which is um, really nice. And I really appreciate her for that. Uh, my dad, Eunice's sister, is also pretty involved, similarly to my mom, Laurence, who is also um, learning about Assyrians um, just like me. And, you know, they're both uh, following me in my dreams of helping our nation. Amazing. They have a lot to be proud of, that's for sure. <laughs> um, growing up, did you have a close relationship with your grandparents? Yeah, I mean, my, I had a very close relationship with both my grandparents. Um, 
my grandfather, he, I remember very distinctly, my, one of my main memories with my grandfather was that he used to give me Assyrian lessons in the morning because, you know, we were very jet lagged. We live in London, uh, flying to New York, we would be jet lagged. And so in the mornings when we woke up at like five or 6 a.m., we would spend that time kind of having Assyrian lessons. Um, to be honest, I don't remember much at all um, <laughs> about the actual Assyrian, but I mean, it was just a, a beautiful memory that, you know, I'll cherish forever. Um, my grandmother, she was a bit, she was a bit like my hero. She was definitely, I miss her a lot for sure. Um, she spoiled me rotten, which I was very lucky to have. Uh, <laughs> you know, she was the kind of grandmother to take me to the American girl shop. Uh, you know, I drag her out of the house and take me to Dylan's candy bar. We'd go to FAO Schwartz, you know, our favorite part of the day or, you know, of, um, the time we'd spend in New York was going to the, the Plaza champagne bar, having our Shirley temples and she would have her. Nice. Time. <laughs> So, yeah, we, we just had the best time together. So they both definitely had a really important role in my life. Great. Yes, I was uh, very close as well with my grandmother. And one yeah. thing I think you would agree, they love to spoil us with food, um, oh, yeah. especially Assyrian <laughs> food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, um, my other grandmother is French. And so that's a very different culture in terms of food uh, than the both Assyrian and Iranian culture and American, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was always food, food and, you know, giving food. And, <laughs> and I'm never complaining about that. So, yes. And chai and pastries. Yes, yeah. I'm very familiar yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, could you tell us um, more about your grandparents and what uh, contributions uh, to the Syrian community that they had made? Sure. So, I mean, they were both very active in terms of helping the community. Uh, my grandfather, Wilson, he worked to unite Assyrians living in Iraq, Iran, Syria, Turkey, and kind of Assyrians uh, globally all over the world. His main objective, which is part of mine, is to was to create an Assyrian homeland in northern Iraq. Um, he founded AUA, for people who don't know, it's the Assyrian uh, Universal Alliance. And it's an organization who unites Assyrians globally with the aim of kind of lobbying a homeland for, um, for the Assyrian people. Um, Wilson was also a member of parliament in Iran. So he was representing the Assyrians in Iran. Um, Wilson uh, made AUA a member of the UNPO, which is the, um, the, unrepresented, uh, the unrepresented nation and people's organization. So uh, yeah, he made AUA a part of that in the 1990s. Um, he had many international contributions, uh, some of them being, you know, that Wilson created the AUA in 1968. Uh, he founded the Ashur newspaper in 1968, which I think ran until, was published until the revolution in uh, 1979. Uh, and it was also published in three languages. So uh, yeah, he was very involved uh, internationally. Um, Nora and Wilson, so Nora being my grandmother, they, uh, they founded the Jam Hospital in Iran, which is um, obviously still uh, a hospital that's alive today. Uh, and yeah, uh, as well, he also founded uh, Assyrian schools in Iran. And wow. um, yeah, so I mean, he made sure that uh, he also, he founded actually an Assyrian clinic uh, that my grandparents ran for free for people who couldn't afford the medical services, whether they were kind of Assyrian or non-Assyrians. Um, so yeah, they saw a lot of patients for free and kind of their main goal was kind of always to help people and um, the community was always a huge thing for them. So many, many contributions, obviously. Um, yeah. What language, what were the three languages that the newspaper was run in? So it was Assyrian, Farsi and English. Okay, yeah. wonderful. And how did you end up on TED Talk? So um, my school received a TEDx license in 2021. So uh, my grade was kind of the second year of TEDx talks at my school. Uh, so in March last, so in March of 2022, uh, just a few months ago, um, we were sent a letter that we could apply for to give a TEDx talk. So since the previous year of watching the first year at my school do uh, TED, give TEDx talks, I immediately was like, I have a perfect idea for this. I, I know what I want to do. My grandmother had uh, passed away uh, mm -hmm. quite recently before that. So I was like, you know, that was kind of when I was starting to do all my research about my grandparents' lives, um, you know, and so I kind of wanted to start getting involved more with the Assyrian community. And I thought that was the perfect platform to do that. Um, so it took me a few weeks to write the talk. Uh, so once I'd gathered all the research about my grandparents and their lives, um, both in ancient and modern times, 
Um, and then I presented the talk in July, and then I just waited eagerly until September for them to release it. The Assyrian Empire fell in 609 BC. Assyria has not existed as a country since then. Yet, for almost 3,000 years, Assyrians have existed as a nation in Mesopotamia. Assyrians survived for centuries because they lived in villages and towns where they were the dominant population, spoke their own language, and worshipped together. But to a 17-year-old, this is stuff that one reads in history books. Yes, it helped me to begin to understand my heritage, but what made me feel it, feel why my grandparents became Assyrian activists and ultimately result in my identifying as an Assyrian, has been the more recent past. That is, what has happened to our people in the last century. From the 14th century to the end of World War I, the Ottoman Empire encompassed Mesopotamia, home of Assyrians. In the late 19th century, the Ottomans started persecuting the minorities, such as Assyrians and Armenians, who were their citizens. The genocide of 1914 to 1918, widely known as the Armenian Genocide, is in fact also the Assyrian Genocide, where more than 750,000 Assyrians were massacred, and this led to the exodus from our homeland. But this was also the dawn of Assyrian nationalism. Early Assyrian leaders demanded the right to a homeland in Mesopotamia as the solution to stopping the persecution of Assyrians. Amazing. Yes, that is a pretty uh, large platform. Yes. So I'm, I'm pretty sure your grandparents would be very proud. <laughs> um, you had mentioned on TED about growing up not knowing many Assyrians other than you know, your immediate family and um, distant relatives that you periodically see. Um, how has that changed? So growing up, as you said, I barely knew uh, even what Assyria was. Uh, I didn't know many Assyrians at all. And if I met them, I kind of didn't really understand what Assyria or Assyrians were. Um, so now I'm very lucky to be able to connect with my fellow Assyrians from around the world. Um, mostly after the release of my TEDx talk, like I said before, it was kind of the best platform for me to kind of um, raise my viewpoints and, uh, you know, talk about what I want to do for our nation. Um, and of course, having uh, been connected to AGN and having this interview is something I definitely would not have been able to do before. So, yeah, some media companies have reached out to me as a result of my TED talk, which has been just amazing. And I've had just the most uh, wonderful comments and positive feedback, which is great. That's great. Um, how do you think your education can help the Assyrian community? So uh, personally, my education, I mean, after college, uh, I'm thinking of doing something um, for my postgraduate degree in something like law or journalism. Uh, so I definitely plan on bringing kind of international awareness to our nation through whatever profession I choose to pursue. Um, so whatever I study, I definitely advocating for a nation, whether economic or political rights is going to be at the forefront of my, um, of my, of my aims and goals. So, uh, because I'm thinking of planning on majoring in, uh, cultural or social anthropology, um, one of my main ob uh, objectives is to research and, uh, publish on the dynamics of ethnic minorities without homelands within the countries that they reside in, um, in diaspora. So, and more generally, by advancing, you know, education within Assyrians, we can further the cause of our nations and we can, a nation, and we can become more vocal in the communities in which we live in. Um, you know, my plans for my studies are to kind of build on, the, on my grandparents' achievements and their viewpoints because they were so uh, big and kind of uh, ambitious goals that they take so long to kind of, uh, you know, building a homeland doesn't, doesn't happen overnight. So uh, that's definitely something that I want to continue to help pursue, you know. Great. And moving forward, um, how do you plan on getting more involved um, within the Assyrian community as far as, um, you know, learning the language, attending Assyrian functions more often, maybe such as our conventions, um, uh, learning the dances, the foods. I remember um, during your tech talk, you had mentioned that you weren't familiar with those things. Um, I, when you were right. younger. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I went to a wedding a few years ago, uh, my first Assyrian wedding, where, mm -hmm. I mean, the dances were just so fun. And I was immediately like, okay, yes. I know <laughs> I want to be a part of this community, you know? Um, obviously, that wasn't the only thing. But essentially, learning the language is definitely part of my uh, aim. It's going to help me become more connected to Assyrians, especially 
uh, when it comes to communicating with those who live in our homeland. Um, I definitely want to get involved with the Assyrian functions and groups and uh, network within the community. Uh, I'd like to even create some Assyrian groups, um, if that's possible, so that we can unite those living in diaspora and those living in our homeland as well. Um, so my grandparents were pretty big on female empowerment. So I definitely want to create a program for the empowerment of Assyrian women. Uh, both my grandparents were very active feminists. Um, as you know, I don't know if you know, but my grandmother, Nora, was the first Assyrian female doctor uh, in the Middle East and one of the wow. first few uh, female doctors in Iran. Um, so, yeah, the uh, empowerment of Assyrian women was definitely at the forefront of their activism. Um, so, yeah, I kind of want to follow in their footsteps in terms of that. And, uh, yeah, and another important thing, actually, is I'd like to create some group. And I was writing some college essays the other day, and I was thinking, uh, you know, I'd really like to uh, create a program, even in college, for uh, the difference between heritage and identity. I think it's important that, you know, um, the, the, my Assyrian heritage has always been there, but it's only been since recently that I've kind of identify, identified with the heritage. So uh, particularly for those living in, um, in diaspora and the Assyrian youth, it's important for um, Assyrians to identify with their Assyrian heritage because it is uh, such a, a minority community that is so special. And yeah, I actually... Uh, as well, uh, because I'm so passionate, as you know, about sports, uh, I definitely like to create some sort of uh, sports teams with young Assyrian women and men in different areas. Like uh, there's the football team uh, Assyriska, I think, in uh, yeah. Sweden. Uh, and so I think it'd be cool to do something with that as well. So to help people uh, who live in diaspora as well come together and, you know, play even annual tournaments or something um, in the homeland or, you know, something like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, well, it sounds like in this very short period of time that you've made great strides and you're, you know, from what you've explained to us about your grandparents, they seemed very ahead of their time. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so basically you have covered uh, the things that you, you know, as far as your dreams for our nation. Yeah. Uh, and um, do you feel like they echo um, those of your grandparents? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I uh, My main aim is to kind of raise consciousness of our nation, make it a, an international consciousness about uh, our people. You know, so my grandparents had the vision of um, us having an Assyrian homeland. I And I want to definitely continue this vision by uh, increasing our identification and awareness of Assyrians, both within the Assyrian community and, of course, spreading that across the world internationally. Um, about the international community of our nation. And um, by uniting Assyrians and working the, with the interna international community, I hope that uh, the dreams of my grandparents and myself now will be realized and that you know, we'll have an Assyrian homeland um, someday in the near-ish future. Yes, God willing. Um, yeah. Well, it definitely sounds like you are uh, carrying out your grandparents' legacy. And... Um, had they been here in the physical form, I'm sure they'd be very proud of you and all your accomplishments and what your future accomplishments will be. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add for our AGN of yours that we haven't yet covered? Um, not really. I, I just want to say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk and connect directly with the with uh, with viewers. And I'm really excited to uh, get to know so many passionate Assyrians and uh, I'm so happy that my my TED Talk's been well-received um, for the Assyrian community, especially. So yeah, just thank you. Thank you for being here and taking the time. I know we're on different time zones. So yeah. um, again, thank you. And for also, um, you know, working with us as far as the time zone difference. No, of, course. <laughs> of course, anything. <laughs> that was Sabrina Bittmansur. Hope you all enjoyed today's show. I'm Caroline Lazar. Hope to see you on the next segment on AGN. Given today's technology, these are far easier to accomplish than during the era of my grandparents. Their accomplishments were enormous and we must build on them. We cannot let our heritage and who we are get lost. I am determined that for the next generation of Assyrians, Assyria will no longer be an amorphous concept. I am determined to make it concrete so that in the years ahead, a 17-year-old Assyrian can readily identify with being an Assyrian 
and not only because she was researching the lives of her beloved grandparents. Avitun basime. Thank you.